Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Vit, and in this video, we're just going to be talking all about how to get into raiding inside Final Fantasy XIV. Um, I started raiding this expansion in Endwalker. Uh, I started out with my first ever extreme fight back at the start of the expansion, and uh, worked my way all the way up from extreme through Savage and all the way through Ultimate. I've cleared two, almost three of the five Ultimates now. And uh, it's just been a real journey. It's been fun. And there's a lot that I've learned along the way, whether it be from the actual raiding experience of learning the fights, learning my jobs, learning how to play better. But there's also just a lot you learn about the groups that you play with, uh, what works for you, scheduling, all that sort of thing. So I hope in this video that we can get into some of all that. I wanna talk about what it takes to actually get started but also some of my mindset when it comes to actually playing and actually raiding in this game. Um, it's going to be a bit more of an end game guide, but there's still a lot you can learn if you're new to the game, still going through the story, and just want to jump into some of the earlier fights maybe. So stick with me, we'll get right to it and start talking about what it takes to raid in Final Fantasy XIV. All right, so luckily when it comes to actually getting prepared to jump into some raids, and I'm talking maybe Extreme, Savage, and Beyond, um, there's really not much you need to do in terms of the prep work to actually start. You can basically take a single trip to the market board, buy some gear, and jump right into Savage if you wanted. Um, Extreme has even less gear requirements, but Savage does have a base item level that you need to meet in order to even try those fights. So what I would recommend, whether now or at the launch of a new raid tier, um, you can basically just go to a market board and buy gear for whatever job you're on. Just go and buy the latest crafted gear. This one here is 640 right now, that's for the current raid tier. And if you were to buy a full set of this, you'd be good to clear the entire raid tier, in theory. Um, that's assuming you know your rotation, know your job, can do good damage, so on and so forth. But this gear will literally carry you through the entire raid tier. And then you can upgrade along the way with drops from Savage or from Tome gear with upgrades. Um, but you can literally just go to the market board and buy this right off the bat. The other thing you're going to want is food and potions. So food basically just gives you a boost to your stats whenever it's on. Uh, baked eggplant here is the current popular one for most jobs. Some other jobs might use different stuff, but I'm not entirely sure. I know I used bake egg, baked eggplant for everything, um, but this boosts your health as well as your damage whenever it's on. So if you're in a raid and you don't have food on, there might be a hit that kills you that the food would have saved you. So it's incredibly important whether you're just learning a fight or going for the clears or just trying to do the most damage as possible. Just having food on could literally save your life in many instances. Um, and then there's potions. You want to look for the most recent tinctures uh, of strength, dexterity, mind, intelligence, uh, whichever one for what job you're using. Strength for strength jobs, dex for fizz ranged and ninja. Then there's the casters and the healers. Um, so just use which one is good for you. For me on Ninja, I'd be using grade eight dexterity. You buy a stack of these, you're good to go. This basically just boosts your damage. You can use these a few times throughout the fight. They have a five minute cooldown. And you know, you don't have to use these while you're learning the fights, but when you are pushing for that clear and want extra damage, you can use these during your buffs and just do that bit more damage. Um, you also wanna make sure all your gear is melded with Materia. So if I look at my gear, you'll see I have Materia on every single piece of gear um, and you can just buy Materia and meld it at a Materia melder if you don't have your crafters leveled, but if you do, you can just meld it yourself. Um, just make sure all of your gear is melded. It's just extra damage that you might be leaving on the table if you weren't to meld. Um, but those three things, you know, food, pots, materia, and having gear, 
you're basically good to go just to jump into whatever savage or extreme fight you want to learn. Um, the next thing that we can talk about a little bit is upgrading gear. So if you have that crafted gear that you bought on the market board, you can actually immediately upgrade it if you go to Rods at Han for Endwalker. Um, you can come over to this vendor right here, this token exchange, and immediately trade that 640 gear for 650. This is probably the most convoluted system in the game when it comes to upgrading this gear, but you basically trade in your 640 gear uh, and you get these tokens that you can buy the upgraded gear with. You also have to buy this rain currency with tombstones. So you buy those, you trade in your gear, and you get tokens and rain, which you can then trade for the upgraded gear. I know it's a lot, but you can basically come in here and get 650 gear right off the bat, um, which is far and above what you actually need to clear a savage so this is only later into the tiers release like after a patch or two that you're able to do this it won't be the same way when the new tiers of raids in dawn trail come out but right now if you're getting into it at the end of endwalker uh, and just trying to learn some fights this is probably the best way to go just to pick up some of the 650 gear this augmented crafted gear as you can see here it is 650 um, and that's a really good place to start another alternative you can use your weekly currency your weekly capped tomes to come over here and also buy 650 gear which can then be upgraded as well to 660 but again you're capped on this per week so you can't do this you can't really farm it out it's kind of time gated but as you go, if you're serious about raiding, you should be picking up the pieces of gear from here that you need as well and upgrading them as you can. Um, it's going to be best to look at your job's best in slot gear because it's likely going to be a mix of things. Um, some of the crafted gear might have good stats for you. Some of the tome gear might have good stats. Some of it might have bad stats. Uh, it all depends. So when you're buying this gear you want to make sure you're buying the right pieces um, again it's not a huge deal at this point but if you're looking to start at the start of a raid tiers release it's definitely important to make sure you're buying the right pieces um, if you don't want to spend gill on the crafted gear you can actually farm out the current raid tiers normal raids for equivalent 640 gear so if you want to save the money you can go in and farm these fights for gear uh, this will be just as good as the crafted gear more or less um, again with different stats so make sure it, you might want a mix of these normal raid pieces and the crafted gear to get the optimal stats for your job i'm not going to go into all that in this video because it's a lot for all the different jobs but you can look at something like the Balance Discord, where they have all of the best in slot gears for every job. Uh, I'm sure you can just Google it as well. Um, or you can join my Discord and I'll have some resources in there and be able to help you out. But farming out these is the more cost effective way, although a bit more tedious. Um, you could come in here and grab some gear as well. Now you won't be able to do this at the start of it, start of an expansion or start of a raid tier because these will all be weekly locked you'll only be able to get maybe one or two pieces of gear per week um, so you will be relying on that crafted gear and the crafted gear can get pretty expensive when it's new uh, each piece i think whenever i bought them they were about 400k a piece so you will very quickly end up spending maybe two million for the whole set but it dwindles down over time. And again, if you mix in some of the normal raid gear, it's not so bad. But that's really all there is to prep. Um, if your gear's in order, food, pots, materia, the last thing is just really study the fights. Um, it's kind of the norm in this game that people will expect you to have an idea of how the fights work. 
unless it is specifically written that it's a blind group. So people expect you to at least know how the mechanics work. They don't expect you to be perfect at them, obviously, or, you know, know how to do them until you're in there practicing them. But you should at least have the general idea so you can practice effectively and not waste other people's time who have watched a guide or looked at a toolbox with diagrams of the mechanics or so on. Um, so that's all I'll say. Watch streams of people doing the fight. Watch POV videos of people doing the fight on your specific job. It really helps a lot learning exactly how to play your job in there. Um, and just visualize how it all works in real time. Uh, you can watch all the guides in the world, but a lot of people won't learn until they're in there themselves. So just put in a little bit of practice, watch a guide at the least. Uh, the amount of people that I know that just <laughs> don't know what they're doing and need things explained is probably too high. So put in a bit of work, put in a bit of prep, getting your gear sorted and you'll be set up for success. There's really no reason you wouldn't be able to clear these fights. All right, we talked about prepping for these raids. Now we have to actually talk a little bit about practicing your job for these raids. Um, knowing your rotation is extremely important and the more comfortable that you are with your job and with your rotation, with your opener and with your burst, uh, the easier the fights will be. If you can just do this with your eyes closed, uh, you should be able to do it while you're do while you're dodging mechanics or, you know, <laughs> struggling in a fight and everybody's dying around you, you can still do some damage. Um, the more damage you do, the faster the fights will die and the easier it will be. Um, you also just need to be able to do a basic amount of damage to clear these fights. So one thing, we're here in Palakas Stand in Ilsebard. You can talk to this guy, the Sharp-Eyed Radiant, and do what's called Stone Sky C. This will let you basically see if you meet the damage check for any high-end content in the expansion. So if you're trying to do Savage, I mean, if you're trying to do Extreme, you can do whatever specific Extreme fight, or you can come in and do the any fight from the Savage tier that you're trying to learn. Um, and this is basically just a striking dummy with a time limit where you need to do enough damage to beat the fight. Um, so if I were to queue into this, the 12th circle, which I think if you're trying to do current Savage, you want to aim for the last fight in the tier, just to make sure you're good for all of them. If you can do enough damage in here on a striking dummy to clear the last fight, you'll be good for all of them. Um, you can also just work your way up, but that last one is the end goal for sure. Um, and when you start this, it'll basically just throw you right in front of a striking dummy. And obviously you can go fight a striking dummy anytime you want. But this just gives you a bit of a deadline. It's only a three minute challenge. So it's not a great test of your abilities because a lot of the savage and extreme fights might go over 10 minutes. But if you can beat this, it gives you a good gauge. There's no other real way to tell in the game without using third-party tools. So just try to do this, see if you can beat these fights in here. And if you can, you should be perfectly good to start trying these fights for real. Now, the one thing I will say is that, like I said, you want to probably practice for a more realistic time frame of the fight, which is, you know, give or take 10 minutes. So you might be better suited to find a normal striking dummy out in the world and go hit it for 10 minutes or so, um, where you can actually sit there and do your full rotation, go through a bunch of your different burst phases, and just repeat them and make sure you're not making any mistakes along the way. Um, and if you can do that for the full length of a fight, it'll give you a much more realistic uh, representation of what the fight might actually look like and the buttons you'll be pressing. So, like I said, the more time you spend on these striking dummies, the better. Um, unfortunately, there are no other tools in the game to test your damage or anything other than this. 
but if you can beat this, like I said, it will give you a pretty good idea. Um, I would personally never recommend you use third-party tools because that would be against TOS, but if you were, I certainly couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> I couldn't stop you. I certainly wouldn't recommend you use ACT, Advanced Combat Tracker, to log your damage. I certainly wouldn't recommend you upload those logs to FF Logs to see detailed breakdowns of everything that happened within the encounter. And I certainly wouldn't recommend you then upload those logs to xivanalysis.com and get breakdowns of what you could be doing better. Um, no, because that would all be against TOS, but if you were to do that, like I said, I couldn't stop you. Um, <laughs> and if you are on console, uh, there are likely people out there who have been logging fights that you might have been a part of. And, you know, you might be able to go to fflogs.com in theory and search your character name and see if there's any logs of your maybe extreme trials, savage raids, or maybe even dungeon runs, just to get an idea of what kind of damage you're doing and how you're playing uh, compared to other people. But again, that's all against TOS because it's a third-party tool, so I'm not recommending or condoning it, but it might or might not be out there for you to use. <laughs> so it really all just comes down to practicing, learn your job, learn your rotation, learn your opener, your opener is extremely important. If you can get that down perfectly, um, just repeat that until it's muscle memory and you're comfortable doing that opener, doing your rotation until the one minute mark and then your burst comes up again. And then again at the two minute mark, your burst will come up again. For most jobs, it works that way nowadays. But as long as you can repeat your burst consistently and on time, you should be doing enough damage. Uh, fit all of your highest damaging buttons into that burst, into those buffs. Uh, talking about optimi optimizing damage in this game is a topic for a whole nother video, so I won't get too far into that. But again, look at resources like The Balance, uh, where they have detailed breakdowns for every job with your rotation, with openers, with burst phases, anything you really need to know to learn a job. And if you practice all this enough and get really comfortable with it, build up the muscle memory, it'll come very naturally in the fights themselves and you should be doing more than enough damage. So that's kind of how I went about it. I was just in here a lot uh, back when I was on console. I was just sitting here hitting the striking dummy, trying to do as much damage on these Stone Sky Sea trials as I could. And uh, it really helped me learn the jobs a lot. So I would recommend that. And uh, just give it a shot. And if you have any questions, again, in Discord, I'm happy to help. I play pretty much every job in this game. And know most of them. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. This part's probably the most fun for me. And if you don't really like hitting striking dummies, I, again, I just highly encourage it. Because being able to do your rotation properly really matters a lot when it comes to some of the later fights. You might be able to squeak by some of the earlier ones and some extremes if you're playing pretty sloppy, but uh, when it gets later on into the later Savage fights and even Ultimate, there's you just need to be really tight with a lot of this stuff, so get practicing. All right, so you're all prepped for the raids. You've practiced a whole bunch. You're ready to jump into the fight. How do you actually go about finding a party to practice these fights with? Well, you have two real options. One is use Party Finder, the in-game tool to search for parties. And the second one is to join a static. Uh, static is just a dedicated raid group who you raid with every week. Um, and there's pros and cons to each of them. Party Finder, super simple. You just go into the game, go to Party Finder, and there will be lists of fights that people are trying to do. Uh, the main thing to note right now is that I'm on Primal, the data center. Uh, our party finder is pretty much empty right now. I'm going to jump over to Aether on NA data centers. I don't know how it is for the rest of the world, but at least on North America, Primal's dead, Crystal's dead, uh, Dynamis is dead. You have to go to Aether if you want to raid. 
So we're going to jump over there and show you what Party Finder looks like. All right, we are transferring over to Aether now. You basically just do this from the character select screen, right click on your character name and do data center travel. Um, we're going to Aether. As you saw, Primal had almost, I think it was zero high-end parties and only like two trials. Usually I come over to Aether and there's like a hundred different parties. <clears throat> so we'll just look at that real quick and make sure that if you're looking to join parties, <clears throat> you know on your data center, yeah, there's 48 high-end duties here. So if you're not seeing any parties, just know you might need to go to a different data center and there will be a lot more options for you. As you can see, there's all sorts of ultimates, all sorts of savage. There's a lot of ultimates right now, a lot of savage. There's some, you know, still some practice parties for savage going on now. Um, you might be able to find some. I would recommend not waiting until Dawn Trail if you want to get into raiding. Try to jump in there now. If you want to use Party Finder, you can just you know, feel free to make your own party if you don't see one. You can just come in here, select which duty you want to use. Um, let's say you want to try the first savage fight from this raid tier. You can come in here, set it for practice. Make sure to put a good description. Um, if you don't write a description or if you write a really bad description, don't be surprised if people don't join. Be, be descriptive. That's the point. Uh, make it known what the point is what you're trying to do and people will be more willing to join maybe even help you out if you ask for help so party finder is a really good tool uh, but it has its pros and cons just like joining a static with dedicated raid members has its pros and cons um, i've been through a pretty elaborate <laughs> journey with raiding in this game i think i've been through maybe four different raid groups now um, from when I started, I think I started with just some extreme trial, jumping into Party Finder, managed to get a clear, but soon after that, um, I joined my first pretty casual raid group where we did the first raid tier from Endwalker. We didn't make a whole lot of progress, we only ended up getting the first two of the four fights done. Um, we got kind of stuck on the third one. The group just kind of was very new to the game, a lot of new players, um, different skill levels, and I eventually had to move on from that group, which you'll likely find. Um, you will you might hit a certain point where, you know, the group just isn't progressing as quickly as you'd like, and, you know, with Party Finder, you can just dip immediately if you're not having fun. If the party's really bad, you can just leave, find a new one. When you're in a dedicated raid group, you're kind of making a social commitment to those people that you're going to raid with them however many times a week. I was doing three nights a week, three hours a night, um, which is, I found a good balance. It's not too much where it's overbearing and it's not too little that you're kind of forgetting what's going on between raid nights. But again, if the progression just isn't there and you're not making the progress that you want to in a dedicated raid group. You have to be aware of that and respect your own time. Um, be aware, like ask yourself, am I wasting my time here? Um, personally, I spent more time than I should have there, but I was raiding with friends. I got to know these people. We were having a good time. So I kind of, you know, let it slide. Um, I was more just having fun raiding with people than more, more so than I was concerned with actually getting the fights done. Again, I was still new, so I was still learning a lot. I ended up doing a lot of the raid callouts for that group where, you know, I would just call out all the different mechanics and everybody would listen to me, which was a bit strange to start, but because I didn't know what I was doing either, but neither did they. So you sometimes need somebody to take a lead like that. Um, but it's, it's just a really fun experience, but I did have to move on from that group and found a more serious group for the next raid tier, uh, where we cleared the whole tier, no problem. Everything was a lot smoother. That group did a lot more damage in general. We didn't need as strict callouts. Everybody could kind of do their own thing. So moving along like that's really nice. 
Um, but same deal with that group. We moved on to ultimate after that raid tier. We did uh, Ultima Weapon Ultimate or Uwu. Um, and we got that done in a reasonable amount of time too. Could have been faster, could have been slower. Um, but I was happy with that. And then right afterwards, we moved on from the easiest ultimate to the hardest ultimate top, um, Omega. And that was a bit of a slog, to be honest. We spent so much time in there. We took a break and did the final third raid tier, Anabasios. Uh, we got that done, and then we got back to top, and our group was kind of just falling apart. There were some scheduling issues, so on, and, you know... It was just, we weren't making progress, so I eventually had to move on from that group as well. Um, and then I joined a more serious group, and we got it done in like a month. But it's, you know, there's a lot of give and take when it comes to joining a raid group. Because, again, all of these groups I had a lot of fun with, and I, you know, made friends in these groups. But at a certain point, it's just like, all right, I need to get on with this. I can only do this for so long before I go absolutely insane. Um, and that's one thing where Party Finder is really nice because, like I said, if you're not having fun, you can just leave. Leave the group right away. Go find a new one within five minutes. Join up. Start the fight with a fresh batch of people. You have a lot more freedom in Party Finder. Um, there's no social obligation there. You know, there's no schedule. So... It's all personal preference, really. You can find a lot of good friends, and if you're new, joining a static can be a lot more comforting, um, where, you know, if you're unsure of yourself, if you're nervous about getting into it, joining a group of other new people is a great place to start. But just be aware, there's going to probably come a point where, you know, you might progress faster than them, they might progress faster than you, and people will come and go. But it is what it is, you know? So, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's really no good way. I, it's, it's always a toss-up between should I join a group, should I PF? Um, I think I've had enough of statics where I'm just kind of sick and burnt out of, you know, doing three nights a week, <laughs> playing video games on a schedule. It's gotten a bit old for me. So I think going into Dawn Trail, I'm just going to be doing pf because right now i'm still in an ultimate group we only raid two nights a week for like two and a half hours a night which is probably less than i would like honestly but with pf i just you know want to be able to jump in there with no strings attached and you know make progress on my own terms which can be fun or it could be a horrible experience we'll find out i haven't done enough pf to really come to a good conclusion all right, thanks for sticking with me. I know this has been a bit of a long video, but I just want to give a few more recommendations before we wrap up here. Um, so if you're a totally brand new raider, totally new to raiding, but you're at endgame, what would I recommend? I would probably say start with extreme. It's obviously the next step up from normal raids, normal trials. Extreme is just super fun. You can farm mounts, you can, you know, Get your feet wet in there. You don't have to jump in the deep end with Savage, but just get into Extreme. There's always going to be learning parties up for those. Uh, there's always going to be people farming and willing to help with that. Party Finder for Extreme is usually pretty busy. Uh, if you just go into Trials, you'll probably see some Extremes. You could even start with older ones, Unsynced if you want, but those will kind of fall over. But the current Endwalker ones, see there's two practice parties up right now. Um, you could just jump into one of those, watch some videos, practice your rotation, make sure your gear and everything's all set, and just jump in. Extreme's really fun. Um, another option you could try to start out is Unreal. So right now, uh, at the end of Endwalker, we have Thordin Unreal, uh, which is just an old Heavensward Extreme trial, but it's ramped up to level 90. Uh, so basically, again, just another current Extreme. Uh, but these are really fun. These have a lot of activity because there's weekly rewards associated with them. So these are basically always alive and well in Party Finder. Um, it might be a bit of a struggle to find a learning group for these, but if you make one, you should be able to fill it out. Um, as always, it's a bit easier to Party Finder when new content comes out 
So when Dawn Trail comes out, new extremes come out, you'll have absolutely no trouble jumping into Party Finder and finding a learning group. Now this late, it's a little bit more quiet, um, but it's still possible. So I would not wait until Dawn Trail. Just get in there now, see what you can join, whatever it is, any learning parties. Um, obviously start with the earlier Savage fights if you're going to jump into Savage because they are... They definitely ramp up in difficulty. Um, if you've already done Extreme and Savage and you're looking to get into Ultimate, I would definitely recommend starting with Uwu. It is definitely the easiest. Yukob is another one that you could definitely start with. Uh, it's very recoverable, so you can die a lot in that fight and still win. In theory, <laughs> I mean, if you're just learning out and everybody else is, if you're just learning and everybody else is also just learning, like, you know, you guys are still going to die a lot. But Uwu and Yukob are probably great starting points. I haven't done T, but I hear that one is very well balanced for an ultimate. That looks like a great fight. And then Top and DSR, or yeah, yeah, Top and DSR are just such a step above the rest, in my opinion, in terms of difficulty, time commitment, and just requirement from the player that I went from Uwu to Top, and I probably wouldn't recommend that for other people. If you go in release order or, you know, level 70, level 80, level 90 ultimates, you'll probably have a much better time. You'll get them done quickly, and you'll learn a lot as you go. Um, when I cleared top, I definitely learned a lot through that process and now all the other ones are going to feel easier. So you can kind of do whatever. There's no order that you have to do them in, but I would recommend starting with Uwu. It's a fun fight, fun enough if you like playing at level 70. I personally don't. <laughs> I really wanted to get the level 90 fights done while they're still current. We're going to be level 100 in Dawn Trail. And I didn't want to have to get synced back down to 90, so I figured I'd get those out of the way first, but we'll save the other 70 and 80 ultimates for a rainy day in the future. They'll always be fun, so you can really just jump into any of them, but there's nothing you, there's no order. Just get to it and get to work learning those fights, because the time commitment is much more significant than Savage or Extreme obviously more so than extreme uh, a lot of people say uwu is really easy but if it's your first one it's still going to be a challenge you're still going to struggle with some of the mechanics and it's just a longer fight than a lot of the other fights you may have experienced in the game uh top and dsr even more so i think the end of dsr we're coming up on 19 minutes <laughs> at the end of the fight and uh, it can be extremely draining and difficult to progress as you're at those later stages. We're at the final phase right now, and it's just goes on and on, and it never ends. So put in the practice, put in the work, jump into it. Don't be afraid because other people are going to make the same mistakes that you will. Everybody's been there, and uh, just have fun with it. So rating's a blast in this game. I love it. Uh, it's why I play this game, and... You know, I'm hoping to have a lot more fun with it in Dawn Trail. Hopefully those fights are fun. If you want a place to hang out, if you have any questions about raiding, um, join our Discord. Uh, I'm going to be documenting my entire PF journey through Dawn Trail here. Hopefully on Twitch as well and in Discord. We're going to be posting strats and everything else that we need for raiding in the discord so hopefully you'll join us there and thank you for watching this video we'll catch you next time peace